Hello everyone, in this uh, lecture we're going to be talking about the Ka, Pka, and then the Kb and the Pkb. Uh, we have talked about the strong acids and strong bases, and we know strong acids and strong bases are strong electrolytes where they ionize completely, but when we are looking at weak acids and weak bases, they are weak electrolytes and they don't really ionize completely, and to what extent they would ionize that's going to be expressed in the terms of an equilibrium constant and that particular equilibrium constant in case of acids would be called the Ka and in case of bases would be called in the Kb. So if I take in a generic example of a suppose a, a generic acid here, maybe um, hydrofluoric acid rather, so I got HFAQ and it's going to be reacting with water and I'm going to be having an equilibrium set up here and the reason why we're going to have an equilibrium set up because it's a weak electrolyte so we're going to have a reaction going both ways so it's going to make H3O plus aqueous and the F minus aqueous so when I'm focusing on this particular reaction and I want to figure out how much of this reactant or this acid has been dissociated into the ions or into the products I can express that in the form of Ka. So your Ka is going to be very similar to writing an uh, equilibrium constant, but A just stands for the acid in this particular case. So I'm going to be writing the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of F minus divided by the concentration of HF. Now remember, this is in a heterogeneous mixture, heterogeneous equilibrium where the liquid water is not going to be a part of your expression because that's just the solvent. Now, if your Ka is high, what that really means relatively, you're going to have a high concentration for the products. So I would say the product's concentration would be high. And uh, the opposite can be said as well. If the Ka is low, then your reactant concentration is going to be high. So another way of saying, if you have a stronger acid, your Ka is going to be high. But if you have a weaker acid, your Ka is going to be low. And we'll talk about that in a minute again. Suppose I'm talking about a weak base, and I can talk about ammonia. Ammonia aqueous is going to react with water liquid and it's going to set up an equilibrium to make ammonium ion so it's NH4 plus plus OH minus aqueous so this this particular one is going to be a weak base it's we're going to be writing its equilibrium constant expression in the form of Kb so if it's an acid, you write it in the form of Ka. If it's in a base, you write it in the form of Kb. So I would have the concentration of NH4 times the concentration of OH- divided by the concentration of NH3. And, and again, we're not going to be including the liquid water in there because that's just your solvent for this particular case. You will be using Ka, the Kbs, a lot of times, but uh, uh, also what's more important or what's more significant to use and also easier to use than Ka and the Kbs is your PKAs and your PKBs. And uh, just like how you find the pH, pH was negative log of H plus concentration. Similarly, we can calculate the PKAs and the PKB. Your pKa is going to be the negative log of the Ka, and uh, your pKb is going to be the negative log of Kb. In GenCam, you use a lot of Ka and the Kbs, and you would uh, uh, use a little bit pKa, pKb here and there. But when you take organic, you're mostly relying on uh, the pKa's and the pKb's to kind of determine the acidity and the basicity of the bases. So you want to make sure you understand uh, how they're going to be calculated from the Ka's and the Kb's and uh, how they're going to be giving you the information in terms of the acidity. 
let's look at what does those KAs and KBs really mean. So if you have a higher KA value, that's going to replicate to a lower PKA value. Then you're looking at the stronger acid. Lower the KA value. If your KA value is small, that's going to replicate to a higher pKa value. And that's kind of very similar to what you see in case of pH and the H plus concentration. So remember when your hydronium or H plus concentration is high, what happens to your pH? Your pH drops. That's exactly what's going to happen here. If your Ka value is high, then you're going to have a low pKa value. And the same can be said about the Kb. If your Kb is high, you're going to have a lower pKb, and that's going to be giving you a stronger base. And then you can also say that otherwise, where if your Kb is lower, you're going to have a higher pKb value, and that's going to give you a weaker base. Now, you're gonna, we didn't really talk about the Ka's and the Kb's of those uh, strong acids and strong bases. That's because they ionize completely. So those six strong acids, those three binary acids and three oxy acids, they're going to have a very high Ka value. And their high Ka value is actually going to replicate to a negative pKa value. And if you have a negative pKa value, that means you are kind of dealing with strong acids. And uh, relatively comparing between the two acids, if one acid has a lower pKa value, that's going to be a stronger than the acid who's going to have a higher pKa value. How would you really compare the pK, the Ka and the Kb of your uh, acids in conjugate bases? So suppose I'm given a generic acid HA. I'm trying to figure out what's going to be the how are you going to be writing the Ka for that particular one. Uh, so HA is going to react with water liquid. So HA is going to be aqueous, and it's going to break into H three O plus plus a minus, and I'm going to write in the Ka. Now, suppose I'm given the NaA instead, or I, I'm given Ka. It doesn't really matter. As it doesn't matter what uh, counter cation you have. You could have any of those alkali metals. That's usually uh, the case. Now, I'm focusing on the A minus now because uh, your uh, this is going to break into ions where the Na and the K plus, they are just going to be the spectators. Uh, so I'm just looking at the A minus. So this A minus is going to be your conjugate base. So when we have the base, we really talk about the Kb values. So I know the Ka of the acid, but how would I relate that Ka with the Kb of that conjugate base? So there is a simple formula that you can always use. The Ka times the Kb is actually going to be equal to 10 to the minus 14. So keep that in mind. In addition to that, you can always relate the pKa's and the pKb of the acid and its conjugate base. So I can say the pKa plus the pKb of that conjugate base is going to be equal to the 14. It's just like writing about pH plus pOH is going to be equal to 14. So these are some of the good formulas you want to make sure you have memorized. So let's figure out uh, some of these questions I have written out. So it says find Kb and the pKb of this particular uh, conjugate base I have written, and I'm given the Ka value for this particular one. So remember, when you're writing this out, I'm just going to be looking at CH3, COO minus, because your Na is just going to be the spectator. And if I want to go ahead and write this reaction with water, it's going to go ahead and make CH3COOH plus OH minus. So since it's obviously producing OH minus, so that's going to be your base. And I'm given the Ka of the conjugate acid. Uh, I'm given the Ka of the acid. So when I'm trying to figure out what Kb is going to be, I can just do 10 to the minus 14. Divide that by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And let's see what that uh, gives us. So the Kb comes out to be 5.56 times 10 to the power negative 10. 
how would you find the PKB here? Well, if you already know the KB, I can just do the negative log of KB to find the PKB. So I'll do negative log of uh, 5.56 times 10 to the minus 10. There is a couple of other ways you can do it. You could figure out the PKA as well from the KA value and then subtract it from the 14. So either way is going to be okay. So depending on how you really want to uh, do this. So this is going to be 9.25 or let's say 9.26 rather. Then what would be the PKA of this? Well, I can either do negative log of the KA or I can just do 14 minus the PKA by using this top equation that we just uh, have written down earlier. So your PK 14 minus 9.26 is going to give you about uh, 4.76. So that's going to be the PKA value for this particular acid. If it's a monoprotic acid, then it's easier to kind of relate your KAs and the KBs. But what if it's a diprotic acid? Then it things gets a little bit chippier. So we get this particular acid right there, the H2CO3. So when I react that with water, so it's going to, it's a diprotic where it's going to lose its proton one at a time. So I'm going to get HCO3 one minus aqueous, and then I'm going to be writing H3O plus aqueous. So once it loses the first proton, we're going to be writing Ka1 for that. Now, when it comes down to losing the second proton, I'm going to have to rewrite this equation. So HCO3 1 minus as my starting point plus water liquid. And then now it's about to lose its second proton where it's going to make CO3 2 minus aqueous and H3O plus aqueous. So that's going to be your Ka2. Now the question is, uh, how are you going to be finding the PKBs or even the KBs from these, from the given information I have uh, from the KAs here? So since I got these uh, Ka1 and Ka2 that's given, I can go ahead and figure out what PKA1 going to be. So PKA1 is going to be negative log of Ka1. So it's going to be negative log of 4.2 three times time 10 to the negative seven so let's see what that uh, comes out to be so your pka1 is going to be 6.36 okay and then find pka2 that's going to be negative log of ka2 and your ka2 clearly we know that's going to be uh, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. So then do the math here. So that's going to be 10.25. And then how would I figure out my KBs actually? So I'm given two compounds here. I'm given the Na2CO3 and I'm given NaHCO3. So remember your Na2CO3 what we're really looking into here, uh, we, it's going to break into the ions where you're going to have 2 Na plus and you're going to have a CO3 1 minus. So that's actually the conjugate base of your second equation that we have written down earlier. So this is where we at right here. So that's going to be coming from the second equation here. So this particular one when I go ahead and write that out as CO3, uh, this should have been 2 minus rather, 2 minus aqueous and then plus water liquid. So it's going to now act as a conjugate base here where it can go back and make HCO3 1 minus plus OH minus. Now how would I really figure out what's going to be the KB here? Now this is going to be called in a KB1. Uh, this is important to understand that your KB1 is going to be related to the Ka2. So your KB1 can be found by doing 10 to the minus 14 divided by Ka2. And similarly, 
when you write the second conjugate base, which is going to be the HCO3, 1 minus. So that's going to be coming from your NaHCO3. So I'm not going to write down the equation, but what we're really focusing on here is HCO3, 1 minus. So this particular one is about to accept its second proton. So we're going to be calling that as a Kb2. Now Kb2 formula is going to be 10 to the minus 14 divided by Ka1. So this is very important to understand what Ka's are related to the what KB's. So KB1 is going to be related to the Ka2 and your KB2 is going to be related to the Ka1. And similarly, if I want to figure out what PKB1 is going to be, that would have been 14 minus your PKA2. And then if I want to figure out what PKB2 is going to be, that's going to be your 14 minus pKa1. So if you already know your pKa's 1 and 2, you can easily figure out your pKb 1 and 2. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.